Welcome hardware enthusiasts, gamers and water cooling fans. After a hardware upgrade, after almost 3 years, today you will get an insight into the most difficult part of this, the conversion of a brand new GeForce RTX 1490 from standard air cooling to a water block for integration with the existing custom water cooling. Before we begin, however, we would like to clearly point out that everything we show today is done at your own risk. We will of course not take any responsibility for any damage or problems if you want to do such a project yourself. We will combine a monthly GeForce RTX 4090 Gallardo with a bike ski water block. However, there is a small catch here. There is no compatible water block officially available for the manly Gallardo. However, there were indications that a water block for a 4090 from Zotac would fit, which is why we try this out directly. But before we can start disassembling our 4090 and mounting the water block, we have to do some basic and important preparations to make sure everything goes smoothly. After all, we want to protect our valuable hardware and achieve optimal results. Therefore, let's first make sure that we have a clean, spacious and well-lit workspace. This makes our work immensely easier and minimizes the risk of damage from dusk, clutter or components falling over. After all, we're not screwing a few fans into the enclosure here, but taking apart several thousand dollars of expensive high-end hardware. So, let's get started. So first we check that we have all the necessary tools and materials to hand. This includes a precision mechanic screwdriver set, high quality thermal paste such as MX4 or Thermal Grizzly, isopropyl alcohol with at least 90%, a microfiber clothes or, in emergency, a fine kitchen roll, tweezers and of course the graphics card and the water block. And don't forget to take anti-static measures to protect your hardware from electrostatic discharge, which is not just mumbo-jumbo but can be a real danger. While wearing an anti-static wristband is the most effective way to ensure you don't transfer static electricity to your graphics card sensitive components, alternatively you can grab a grounded water pipe, heating pipe or similar to minimize the risk considerably. So once your workspace is set up, and you're equipped with all the necessary tools and materials, it's time to turn off your computer and disconnect all cables. Make sure you unplug the power cord, of course, and disconnect all connections such as HDMI, DisplayPort and power cables. This will ensure that you can safely work on the hardware without the risk of short circuits or electric shocks. We didn't just replace the graphics card here, of course, but also upgraded all the core hardware to an up-to-date level for 4K video editing and of course gaming. With the Asus Prime X670P, a Ryzen 9 7950X, DDR5 6064GB, Kingston Fury Beast Kit and other NVMEs. By far the most expensive component, however, was the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 shown here as a Gallardo custom model from Manly. And since we completely removed the cooler, let's call it something that takes some getting used to, the optics weren't a selection criterion anyway. In addition to a holder for the heavy cart that can be attached to the slot bracket, the scope of delivery also includes an adapter cable for the new 12-pin power connection. Here, however, we preferred an adapter cable from Be Quiet, since we also use a 1200W Be Quiet power supply. But now it's time to disassemble our manly RTX 4090 Gallardo. The step is of course the prerequisite for finally being able to mount the bike ski water block, and also the most delicate. We have not been able to find any reliable information on the manufacturer manly and its position on custom water cooling systems in terms of warranty or guarantee, so perhaps you have more detailed information here. Compared to the previous, also water-cooled MSI Ventus 3090 with an EKVB water block, it is noticeable that the 4090 with a bike ski water block is almost identical in length and will not pose a problem. So, place the card on your clean workstation and locate the screws on the back that attach the cooler to the graphics card. Carefully remove all the screws that connect the cooler to the graphics card. Keep them in a safe place so you don't lose them later and can use them if you need to remantle the cooler. Remember that you have to disconnect a total of 3 cables for fans and the RGB lighting of the heatsink. Disconnect these cables very carefully to avoid damage. You really need to be patient here and you may need tools such as tweezers. 
After you have removed all the screws, you can carefully detach the cooler from the GPU. This may require some force, but be very patient and take care not to apply too much pressure so as not to damage the sensitive components of the graphics card. The card is held in place quite well by the thermal paste between the GPU and the heatsink, as well as the thermal pads, so be very gentle here. Before we can mount the bike ski water block, we have to make sure that the GPU of our 4090 is absolutely clean and free of all thermal paste residues and dust. Throughout, cleaning is essential for optimal heat transfer and significantly better cooling performance. First, however, we remove the remaining screws to the backplate so that we only have the GPU board in front of us. For cleaning, you need isopropyl alcohol with at least 90% concentration and a clean microfiber cloth or, if necessary, kitchen roll and cotton swabs to clean the GPU effectively. Use some isopropyl alcohol on the cloth and gently wipe the GPU to remove all thermal paste and dirt. Be careful not to apply too much pressure so as not to damage the sensitive components of the GPU. The surrounding areas on the graphics card may also need cleaning, especially the memory chips and the voltage converters, if there are remnants of thermal pads. This is because these components are also part of the cooling process and must be cleaned to ensure optimal performance. Once the GPU and surrounding components are then clean and free of residue, we let everything dry briefly and blow out any dust. And now that our GPU is clean, we can start preparing to install the BikeSki NST4090 TQX V2 water block. In the scope of delivery, you will find suitable heat conducting pads, which you can cut to size and gradually place on all marked areas. Do not forget to remove the foil on both sides beforehand and check this again. You can also see on the contact surface of the water block which areas need to be equipped with heat conducting pads. Finally, you apply an even layer of thermal paste on the GPU, whereby there are several philosophies on how this should look. Whether you apply an X or a central dot is a matter of opinion, but in any case it is important not to apply too much or too little. We recommend applying a small blob to the center of the GPU, which is then disturbed evenly by the contact pressure and, above all, without air pockets. Now we position the bike ski water block over the GPU and the surrounding components. Make sure that the connections for the cooling are pointing in the right direction and that the water block is correctly aligned before you carefully press it on. Here are also the instructions on how to assemble the individual components, the water block, GPU board and backplate is. Now you only need to attach the water block to the graphics card by using the screws provided according to the instructions. Make sure to tighten the screws evenly to ensure optimal pressure on the GPU. And that's it! The installation of the Bikeski NST4090 TQX V2 water block on our Manly GeForce RTX 4090 Gallardo is complete and was absolutely problem free. As expected, the Gallardo is identical in construction to some Zotec variants, which is why we can unreservedly recommend the Bikeski water block. Even on the full load and in stress tests, our card never got warmer than 44 degrees. And the dimensions of about 25 cm after installation are comparable to our previous card, an MSI Ventive 3090. And the note about the 4090's power connector. Unlike previous series, it is rather filigree and there are many reports about melted connectors. Therefore, our tip is to ensure a clean and stress-free connection to avoid such problems. And with that, we say goodbye to this hardware excursion. See you soon and as always, see you in the verse.